Hey folks, uh, just gonna do a quick one tonight because I uh, meant to upload this video a long time ago and I just realized I never did and while I was reviewing it I realized it sucked and I could do it better. So here we are. Um, I'm gonna be replacing the battery in one of my games here. Just want to do a, a quick, you know, this is this is how I do it. it might not necessarily be the best way, but it's certainly the easiest or probably safest way. Um, so here we have a original copy of Donkey Kong. This one in specific is from Japan, but it's, I mean, it's all the same game. Doesn't really matter where you got it. Um, you pop it in a Game Boy. It all, everything works fine. It even still holds saves. Um, but if you if your game no longer saves, you know, maybe you want to look into replacing the battery. Um, every original Game Boy game or Game Boy Color game that saves has a battery. Uh, so if your battery dies out, you'll need to replace it. And there are two different types of batteries. There are the CR2025, or in this case, 2032. They're about the same thing, just the 32s are a little bit thicker at 3.2 millimeters instead of 2.5. Or the CR1616. Uh, C for coin, or no, excuse me, C for lithium primary, R for round is in the shape. And then the numbers are just the measurements. So, um, what, like 16 millimeters or something like that by 1.6 millimeters, and then 20 millimeters by 3.2 millimeters. Uh, so, to open this card up, if you're only doing one cart, uh, you could probably get this screw out with a, um, I don't know, that, that big pen trick where you take apart a pen, hit it with a lighter smash it in there and then wait for it to cool and then you can screw it out. If you're only doing one, whatever, I'm sure that works fine. You could probably work that out with tweezers or pliers or something too, but you can get one of these on eBay. You search for game bit screwdriver or just game bit and you'll find two different sets of these tools here and if you focus you can see what that looks like there. Um, but yeah, there are two different sizes. I guess this is the 3.8 millimeter. You want the smaller of the two. The bigger one will work on Super Nintendo carts, I believe. Uh, but if you're going to be doing more than one cart, just buy the tool. It's a dollar. Super easy. Pop that out, set your screw aside. And this game in particular, this is the original battery from 1994 here. If you look at the code, all of these batteries should have a date code on them. That's the year and the month, so this is from February of 1994, and it's still holding the save practically 25 years later. Uh, but if you want to check your battery, you can just take any old multimeter, put it in volt mode, and probe both of these pads here. And you can see my battery's at about 2.8 volts, 2.79, and it's going down as I'm probing it, which I'm not 100% sure the reason, maybe the multimeter's taking a little bit more power, or that's just the way it is because this battery's at the end of its life. Uh, if you measure a new battery, for example, you'll see my new one is at 3.32 volts. That's negative because I have the probes backwards, but whatever, it's the same thing. And then same thing here, 3.27 volts. So this battery is actually a little bit newer than that one, but they'll both work. They're still pretty new. If you do take apart your cart and you measure it at 3 volts or less, you might want to consider putting a new battery in. Um, and if you take apart a cart, I have, sorry, knocking the camera around. I have this one here just as an example. I already took the screw out and measured it. And I know for a fact this one doesn't hold the save. And if you probe the battery, that's why. The battery is completely dead. Uh, so I could pop a new battery in that one, but I don't really care to replace the battery in this cart. I just bought it for parts anyway. Uh, but we'll move on. Um, another thing, when you take apart the cart itself, again, with the focusing, what's going on here? There we go. You can see it should say on the motherboard itself what battery it takes. So in this case, there's some text above the battery. It says BATTCR1616. 
So this cart uses a CR1616 battery. Um, in most, nearly all original Game Boy carts, you can replace that with a CR2032 as long as you're using a tabbed battery. Don't ever do the electrical tape method, by the way. That's awful for your carts. There's a good chance you break something. It doesn't work well. Just, just don't do it. If you can't solder, learn or pay someone to do it. Just That's the only way. Um, anyway, kind of lost my train of thought there. Um, oh yeah, this game uses the 28, or excuse me, 1616, but the Pokemon games, Crystal in particular, uses a 2025. You can see it's a bigger cell. This is, of course, the Japanese version, but it's, it's all the same uh, for every different version of Crystal. Uh, if you have one of these super weird carts, this is also a 2025, but this is one of those weird ones that doesn't even use a tab battery. There's just a little Phillips screw in there. You pop that off and you can replace the battery pretty easily, but this is more of the exception, not the rule. Um, if you have something that looks like this, well, you got a fake cart. You can replace the battery in it if you want. Um, but just know that it's probably only going to work for like a month or so before you have to put a new battery in it. But these ones actually have battery holders, so you don't have to get the tab batteries. I can't get this battery out. It's physically stuck in there. I don't know what's going on, but I don't care enough. It's just a cheap junk reproduction cart. Um, back to the original cart here. So you've got your screwdriver. You got it open. You take your motherboard out. And if you haven't already lost your save, you will lose your save now when you do this. You gotta take your soldering iron, and I like to just stick my uh, fingernail under the battery, apply a little bit of pressure, and then take your soldering iron and just stick it into one of those pads. It might take a little bit to heat up. These are humongous pads. In this case, I think I need to turn the temperature up on my iron just a little bit. Try that again. There we go. Once you've got one side, flip it over, do the other. And that's it, you've got that desoldered. So I'm going to add a little bit of fresh solder this out of the way here to the pads and we'll do the little bat no we'll do the big battery why not all right so when you get ready to solder in your new battery there's two things you want to do. First, you want to make sure you tin the pads. You can do it without tinning the pads, but trust me, it's significantly easier. And tinning means to just get a little bit of solder on the pads beforehand. And again, if you're uh, new to soldering, you want to make sure you're applying the solder to the pad itself and not to the iron. And if you do both sides, it just just makes it a little bit easier. Okay. Now, next thing. You have to make sure you get the polarity correct. On these batteries, it's a little bit more difficult because there's a band over it. You can't exactly see which side is which. Um, but the side with more surface area, such that if you look at the side of a battery, you can see that Maybe if this will focus. No, that's not happening. Okay. You can see that how this bottom part kind of wraps up and around the side to this little pad on the top here. The little pad is always the negative or the ground. And the big pad on the bottom here that wraps around, that's the positive. And this one, it's kind of hard to see because it's super small and I doubt it's going to come out on camera but it is actually marked this side. There's a little uh, plus. Um, if we take a look at our battery here, 
you can see the same thing. This side is unmarked. This one has a big old plus on it. So this tab is the positive. This tab is the negative. Let me turn on another light. Will that help? No, not at all. Okay. And the board itself is going to be marked. The left side is ground, and this side is positive. And if you look real close right there on this one, there's a little plus, and right there on this one, there's a little negative. It's hard to see because this board is covered in flux residue, but trust me, it's there. When you take a look at it in person, it's super easy to tell. So just get your new battery. Make sure you got each side, you know, lined up right. And take your iron, do one side. Do the other side. And if you're using a bigger battery, like I am in this case, make sure you press down, make sure it's nice and flat. And then I like to go back and do the first side again. And in this case, I'm going to add a little bit more solder. Because this solder has uh, flux in it, and I'll get into that at some other time, but flux makes it a lot easier to save or to solder, excuse me. So once you've got your uh, new battery in there, you can go ahead and reassemble the cart. Don't forget to put the screw back in. Pop it in here. It should boot up just fine, but I'm probably not gonna have any more save files, which is to be expected. Yeah, all my saves are gone. But if you have a uh, handy dandy cart reader like this, you can easily fix that. Um, of course, you'd want to do this beforehand. You want to back up your save, otherwise you have nothing to restore. But, as long as you do back up your save, you should be good to go. Of course, it's that bottom one. Start button on this Game Boy sucks. Oh, that didn't work here. Hmm. Maybe I didn't do a very good job of backing it up. I never actually checked to see if it worked. But there you go. That's all you need to do to replace your battery in your cart there. It's super easy. Um, you know, hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. Um, I do, even if I don't respond, I do read, actually read all my comments there. Uh, but if you want to, actually, while I'm at it, if you want to just double check that you did everything right. Oopsie doodle. There we go. See, plus red, minus negative. Now see, that's interesting. We did measure this battery. It was working. Something happened. Is it my meter? This is the meter I was having trouble with in the other video. I figured out it was the uh, black probe here. Nope, it's that battery. Oh, such is life. This is why you check it. On occasion, you do get a bad one. So I guess you get a twofer in this video. Oops, at the cost of it being slightly longer. That's okay. You do things right, not quick, and you'll have a much better time. Another thing that I think is a little bit probably worth mentioning, uh, these little batteries I have here, the 1616s, 
These are actual name brand Panasonic batteries, uh, which are significantly more reliable than these, uh, <laughs> as evidenced by what just happened. Um, these 2032s I have are just generic off-brand junk I got on AliExpress here. Uh, whereas these Panasonics are, you know, OEM. This is what Nintendo actually used when they made these carts originally. Got them off of, I think it was DigiKey. Probably, maybe. Whereas the uh, 2032s were just AliExpress special. Let's try back storing that save one more time. Bear with me, guys. Sorry. apples so yeah that's that's an argument in favor of the name brand batteries over the cheap junk um, but that's also an argument in favor of actually checking your work when you're done and not just finishing up and assuming it's good so there you go you don't know until you know and now you know so there you go